Hello, Stephen Midford from Washington. How are you today? I'm great, Eric. Thanks. All right. So thanks. Uh, thanks for being here. First of all, quick disclaimer: Stephen and I have been doing business together for for a lot of years, so we we know each other really well, and so I was really excited to to have you on board today. A, a bunch of years, and happy to be here. All right. So we're here today to talk about Skunk Works related to Capango. So as you know, I think you've been following this a little bit. Um, I like to start by badly explaining your business and then letting you correct me. So let's let's see what I got for you today. So what I have for Capango. So Capango, if I understand it correctly, Capango tricks potential retail workers into thinking that they're dating, but they actually end up matching with jobs. How did I do? Uh, I, I think you get a D minus on that <laughs> if I'm going to grade it fairly. Um, so you, part of the concept is right. Uh, Capango is, uh, think of it as a social jobs platform um, that is, in fact, reinventing recruiting um, for retail and restaurant workers. And so the reason that the dating reference is important is we actually think of it like a dating app for retail work. But um, the reality is what we're doing is we're, we're really trying to reimagine the whole recruiting process. How do you hire hourly labor in retail and restaurants and, and how should it be done? Right. So, but, but I think matching is an important concept, right? That's, that's why I got the dating stuff. Tell me a little bit about matching. Yeah. If you think about it, when, when you're trying to find a job, if you're a job seeker, or if you're an employer trying to find an employer, it's just like a dating app, right? You're really trying to figure out who's the best person I can hire and, and the employer is trying to figure out who's the person that's going to do the best job for me. So fr from that context, it is a dating app, right? It's the ability to match up a, a candidate for a job and an employer that's looking for a candidate and drive the most success we can um, in both matching them uh, and hopefully in finding them actually work that they love and, and that they're good at and they continue to do. All right. So I got to ask, as part of your research, how many dating apps did you download and how did you explain it to your wife? Uh, I uh, will officially say that I did not. I assigned that job to somebody else so that I would not have to explain it to my wife. Um, but um, we definitely spent a lot of time thinking through the whole uh, user interaction, right? What what does a user want to interact with and and how do you drive that um, the behaviors um, the user experience and all the other things to try and make it feel like that if you from a seeker's perspective the way we thought about the problem was that every day they're using their phones as their primary method of communication um, you know and employers are still quite frankly still focused on pcs and and websites and application forms. And, and so we knew there was a mismatch there right off the bat, right as soon as we started looking at it. Um, when we think about the phone as a method of communication, then the thing that people in their minds relate their experience to is the other apps they use, all the other social apps, whatever it is. And those social apps are constantly upgrading. They're constantly driving user behaviors. And, and quite frankly, industry is not keeping up with that. So we really wanted to look at that and say, okay, what are those types of strategies to work uh, at um, helping somebody be more successful in our app through social constructs that they're already used to? Things like swipe right. Swipe right, everybody now in their brain knows is a positive confirmation of something. It's become a standard, I like, it's positive, versus swipe left, I don't like, it's negative. Right. And, and so we wanted to kind of uh, integrate those concepts into a production app for finding work. Cool. No more dating jokes. I'm, I, I'm not going to be a teenager anymore. But I really want to talk to you about also uh, the way that I, I like to structure these, these discussions is basically around three concepts, right? So I call them uh, fire, focus, and fortune. So fire, what makes you excited? What made you excited about this in the first place? What's the, what's the emotion behind, you, you know, behind this uh, as you as an entrepreneur? Then focus is um, how, do you, how do you get to know what to build? And then fortune is really sort of if the more, the more, the more that you're willing to share about the financials that are around this, because it, you know, the technology is fine, um, ideas are fine, but in the end, you need money to make all of this work, right? So for sure. So let's start with fire. Tell me a little bit about how you've been uh, sort of started thinking about this and what made you feel like, oh, oh my God, this is something I'm actually going to do. Yeah, I, um, 
you know, it really goes back to the fact that I've been involved with the retail industry my whole working career. So in some form or fashion, all the way from starting as a salesperson at a retail store and going through management ranks and, and going to then moving towards, um, you know, uh, technology teams and executive ranks and so on. And when uh, I had a company a couple of years ago that was working on retail execution technology. So think about the technology that somebody uses to schedule a worker, have a worker go in, do something, gather data and back and forth. And, and so as part of that company, one of my jobs was always to go out and talk to the clients, right? As a CEO, go out, talk to the clients. How are we doing? You know, how's my team doing for you? How's our platform doing for you? What are your business challenges? And one of the things that they came back to me with constantly was, hey, you know what? Your platform really does a great job and a brilliant job at helping me manage the employees once I hire them. My biggest challenge is actually hiring employees. And when I started to look at it, what I was surprised to discover was that the process of hiring employees at retail uh, and for restaurants um, really hadn't changed since I started in the industry and was hiring employees from my own store teams um, decades ago. And, and so that was really the impetus. Then we start to look at it and realized a couple of things fairly quickly. One is it is a pervasive problem. Um, there are tens of millions of workers uh, across North America that are in the retail and restaurant trades that are doing these jobs. And um, every one of those companies has a budget somewhere that is, hey, I need to spend money on this. So it's it's a problem that has a budget associated to it <laughs> in every P&L at every retailer and every restaurant in, in North America. Um, and the second thing is when you look at the size of the market, it's a huge market, right? And so when you think about, should I do this or should I not do this? Identifying something that's already got budget associated with it, and that's a huge market, is, is an attractive at least thing to get you thinking about, should I get into this or not? Yeah, that's that's the difference between a young startup uh, CEO just getting excited about an idea and a veteran just knowing that he's going to have to hit a budget at some point if he wants this to succeed, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. We we knew that if we were going to invest in this, we wanted to make sure that we had the right market to do it. And, and um, we knew that um, we had to have a big enough challenge because there's a lot of things, there's a lot of platforms out there. You know, you could say, well, gosh, there's a lot of job boards out there. Um, so we really had to focus our attention on, we can't just be a job board. That that doesn't make any sense. There's too many of them already. Right. All right. Okay. I think there's an interesting story that I want you to tell me, even though I already know it, but I think there's an interesting way in which you guys have, uh, I'm moving on to focus now, in which you guys decided what you needed uh, to build, right? Because that's one of the big risks in things like this is building the wrong thing, right? Not doing your research, then building your own thing, then finding out that you've you've burnt all this money and you're you're not where you're supposed to be. So how did you how did you de-risk this situation early on? Yeah, I, I think there was a couple of things. We were very fortunate in that we already had a profitable company that was throwing off profits and, and generating revenue for us. So we had the time and patience to invest in research, um, both of the market and then of the, the needs, right? And when we started to do that research, um, this project turned into probably the only project in my entire career where we did the entire prototype um, used in vision, a, a you know, pretty common prototyping tool to help us understand how we might solve this problem and did the entire platform in Envision before we even wrote the first line of code. Um, I, I don't think that you're getting yourself enough credit right now. I want people to understand that for what, like a year has it been for a long time. Yeah. Not a single line of code was being written. The prototype evolved. You even went to the National Retail Federation show and I had a whole booth when you were showing this thing running, I'll say in quotes, yeah. um, on a phone. And you, you you couldn't call it a demo because it wasn't, what did you call it? It was a preview, right? It was a so preview. I like preview that. Preview of the new uh, the new way to recruit. And and so that was sort of at the end of the year, but you're right. It, it was an entire year of research. So things mm -hmm. as simple as, hey, we have this idea and doing the storyboards and 
the graphics and the look and the feel. Hey, what's the personality of this app going to be like? If it's going to be a social app for recruiting and we're really going to reimagine recruiting, we have to have a personality to go along with that. So what does that look like? Um, and then some of the storyboards and then moving the storyboards to Envision, then going to a phase where we literally had people standing in front of Starbucks and handing out $5 gift cards and saying, hey, I've got a little prototype app here for finding a job. I'll buy your coffee if you go through this app and, and getting your feedback, right? What makes sense? What doesn't make sense? Um, and so, and then finally we had to get more feedback from the employers. So we went to uh, one of the big uh, retail trade shows, put up a massive booth, stood there and said, how'd you like to look at a preview of the new way of recruiting a retail? And uh, uh, really got their feedback as well, uh, as well as some of the students that were attending the show. A lot of uh, the retail schools uh, send their students to the show. So it was a good place for us to both talk to employers and talk to potential job seekers uh, about what were we building and, and did it make sense to them? And for me, that was the exciting part of it because both communities got excited. The employers got excited and said, look, here's some things that we see in here that we clearly haven't seen before. Then those, that's exciting to us. And the students got excited and said, wow, if I'd had this when I was looking for my first part-time job or my, my seasonal job or whatever, I would have loved it. Right. Uh, so using the prototype to create a lot of conversations that are actually kind of based on something. Very cool. Yeah. Um, it strikes me that Capango could be a really good tool for, and, and this is still in, in the topic of focus, a really good tool for like these mom and pop shops, or it could be a really good tool for Walmart. You know, how do you decide what part of the market to go after? Or you go after everyone and you raise tens of millions of dollars. Like what's, how do you come up with a strategy like that? Yeah, it, it takes some discipline for sure. Um, the, the biggest danger you can run into in any technology project is, is wandering, right? is not having a clear path and, you know, um, setting the poor developers on a mission to build something that, that doesn't have a vision of where it's supposed to land. So the prototypes helped with that. Um, after the prototypes, we went into a beta phase where we invited um, dozens and dozens of companies to say, hey, this is beta. We're not going to charge you for it. We want you to come in and, and use our platform and see if we can do it. And we then started seeker advertising to bring seekers in. And what we did during that beta phase was really listen carefully to their feedback, right? What are the things that we thought were um, part of our core beliefs? And did the did they actually turn out to be that with that way? And there's a couple of learnings that we did there. Um, one of them was clearly around market size and, and who it was for. We built the app thinking this is a self-managed platform for Joe's Coffee Shop and, and Joe's Corner Store, right? And so the, uh, a small retailer or restaurant could go in, register their company, self um, pay for everything, load up their job profiles and so on, and immediately get access and start to, um, to use the platform to, to find job seekers in their area. Um, that worked great for the first couple of months until the first employer came to us and said, hey, we really like this. We're going to add 40 recruiters and 1,000 jobs. And we've had to go backwards a little bit and say, right. okay, well, that's different, right? That's having Joe's Coffee Shop do it with you know, 10 openings and one recruiter is completely different than having 40 recruiters and a thousand jobs spread over the country. So we did have to do some rethinking on that to make sure we handled both audiences, because the reality is we discovered we're delivering value to both sides of the, of the um, uh, size of the industry. The small players could absolutely use it to find one or two people and large players could use it to put teams on to recruit across the country. And if you're a job seeker, the feeling, the experience is the same. You don't care. But if you're a recruiter yeah. or a bigger brand or a smaller pop and shop, you're gonna, you're not gonna come at it the same way. Yeah, you're not gonna come at it the same way. Um, and you definitely have to still look at the behaviors of recruiting. So that was the other thing that that was really uh, important for us to learn during the beta phase was if you're gonna introduce a new set of technology into a business. You can't just bring the technology and say, okay, now use all your old processes um, because it doesn't work. And so when we introduced the technology, we also had to bring in a customer success team that said, okay, well, here's the things that we've started to see as best practices using the technology. So a good example would be, we consider it social recruiting because we've got chat and video chat embedded into the app. So if I'm a job seeker, I can swipe right to work. That pings it up on an employer's list. The employer can see that candidate quicker. 
Um, and the employer's immediate sort of Pavlovian, Pavlovian response is, hey, I want to phone that seeker or I want to email that seeker, right? And we had to go back and say, well, wait a minute, the seeker downloaded an app that's a social like app that has chat integrated. They may not even want emails and they certainly don't want phone calls these days. And right. that's not the behavior that's common in the marketplace, even though industry still behaves that way. So uh, how annoyed are you personally when your phone rings and the person didn't text you before that said, hey, Stephen, can I call you? Right. It's a yeah. thing now. It's a thing, right? You don't answer any call that you don't recognize or that's not been introduced to you. So, you know, those behaviors have already been ingrained in consumers and job seekers. So now we have to go back and change the employer's um, processes as well. So as we learned through the beta programs, we we saw things like that where we said, no, 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 you, you need to make sure that you're chatting. We've got the chat integrated here. Change your chat right. process. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, don't schedule an interview. Nobody wants to schedule an interview. Hit the button and open up a video window, uh, window and have a conversation with them right now. Right, because you guys have integrated chat, right? The integrated integrated video chat, chat and video chat. Yep. Okay. So I can I can quickly hit the chat button, say, hey, I saw your profile in Copango. You'd be great for the job at my camera store. Um, have you got a few minutes to talk? Uh, and if they say yes, hit the next button on the platform. We open up a video window and now we're in a conversation. So. Um, for retail and restaurants, one of the things that's different about this industry or important to this, about this industry, I guess I'll say it that way, is whether it's a store or a restaurant, that's a brand, right? The individual that you hire has to represent your brand. So if you have a, a casual dining restaurant, there's a certain expectation of the service and the type of employee that's going to work there versus a fine dining restaurant. If you've got a corner store, you have a certain expectation versus a specialty garden center versus a specialty camera store. Right. So in each of those cases, the individual you hire has to represent your brand. So the easiest way to understand how an individual represents a brand is video. It's what we're doing today, right? It's how, how we understand each other visually and can, um, you know, uh, we used to say a picture tells a thousand uh, is worth a thousand words. Well, a video is a multiple of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I thought we were going to go all, all math on me and start multiplying images and, uh, and, and images at 30 images per second, a video is worth, <laughs> sorry, but, uh, but it, it really is. If you think yeah. about it yeah, yeah. through your experience, right? It's why we all use our phones every day. It's great to take a snapshot, but now we can take a quick video too. And, and your right. memories become that much more important to you. Yeah. yeah. It's like using um, Instagram stories to recruit. It's amazing. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Very cool. Listen, I have to ask you this question. You've, uh, you're someone that's been around the block. You've been doing this before. You stole at least one company that I know of. Uh, you've started companies. What's different in, in uh, 2021, uh, right? You, versus the, uh, the previous company that you started, right? Yeah, I'm assuming that when you started Natural Insight, one of the big problems was getting servers, right? And now the, cloth, the cost of cloud, uh, cloud computing is completely collapsed. There's a bunch of things that have completely changed. What were some of your choices in starting this company that were completely different just because the world was different? Yeah, I, I think for sure. Um, it, just like you have to have a good vision of where you're going with um, your product, you have to have a good vision of where you're going with your technology platform. Um, and, and technology platform is a good way to say it, right? You have to have a platform concept around it. It used to be you could get some servers and throw some software on it. And I've been through all, all the phases of host processing servers, you know, building servers distributed. And now... Um, it, platforms like AWS and Google and, and Microsoft that have the shared services platforms. Um, for us, it was making sure that we really did pay attention to the newest technology out there and leveraging it. Um, so the simple things like the ability for a user to sign in using their Facebook, Apple or um, Google account, right? And getting rid of emails and passwords and those kind of things. So those uh -huh. concepts, again, they're becoming common in the marketplace and there's great tools out there to do that. So making sure we understood those tools, making sure we understood scalability on things like serverless farms, where we weren't buying servers as our volume grew and having to allocate budget to it. We were simply buying cycles and making sure that the technology dynamically um, grew with us. Um, making sure that if we have a vision for international um, 
services that we've already brought in internationalization the first day we write the first line of code, right? How are you going to handle multiple languages, multiple currencies, multiple um, things like uh, miles or kilometers and, and some of those things, right? Date formats um, at a local level, not even a country level. So uh, in my last company, we were very cognizant of that. It turned out to be very beneficial, right? We understood French as multiple languages, depending on what country you're in and whether you wanted Parisian French or Quebecois French. Uh, we understood English as different in the UK or Australia or Canada than it was in the US. We understood Portuguese was different in, in Brazil than it was in Portugal. So um, when we started this company, um, all of those considerations were sort of ironed out day one for the developers mm -hmm. so that we had a strategy behind those things um, because our vision was we are going to be the player in retail and restaurant recruiting. Uh, and if you're going to be the player, then you have to expect that those are the things you're going to tackle. Right. Um, that being said, to, to go back to your question. You could do all of those things, but as a small company now, the, the biggest thing that strikes me from years ago is this a small company, you have to take those thoughts off right off, right off the bat, right? It used to be you just sort of built your technology and you, you kind of played it out in whatever country you're in or the zone you're in and, and you know, you tried to grow. And now you have to think about it. And, and I see it in our platform. I see the number of people that are accessing our platform from international countries. And I'm kind of like, wow, I wouldn't have guessed somebody in... Uh, Greece is accessing our platform. And so um, with the way technology works these days, you just have to assume that you're an international company. Right. Have you seen the uh, the this uh, nerdy joke from uh, XKCD where a couple of developers are looking at the news from Elon Musk thinking, oh, we're going to colonize Mars now. And the first thing that they think is great, more time zones. Yeah. <laughs> I hadn't seen that, but it's so true, right? It's... it's um, <laughs> When, when you look at it and you start to think about the logistics of service or whatever else, and, and I've been through that, right? You, you get up on the, if you're on the East coast of the U S we're outside of Washington, DC, you get up in the morning and you immediately tackle the stuff that came in from Europe. And then you work through the day. And then at night, you're kind of keeping an eye on what's going on in APAC and Australia. Right. Um, you know, the, the world is flat now. Yeah. Uh, listen, uh, there's one thought that kind of keeps on, coming to mind when uh, when I'm, I'm hearing you hearing you talk about Capango, which is the fact that right now you you are sort of uh, you know existing and and growing uh, while you're addressing something like retail work and restaurant work in in this economy what is your expectation for it, it's almost like a fire that's kind of doesn't have that much oxygen at some point that door is going to open and oxygen is going to burst into the room. Yeah. You expecting some sort of explosion? Are you running around with vaccines, just vaccinating people just to make sure that the uh, the economy starts as, uh, as fast as possible? Are you wish, ready for this? Wish we could. We're 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 certainly um, positioning for it. Here's here's the way I would answer it. This question comes up a lot when you talk about retail and restaurants because certainly those two segments of our economy have been impacted by COVID more than anything else, right? Right. Um, and when we started Capango uh, and started this journey uh, more than two years ago, um, the reason we started it, people said they couldn't find the workers because unemployment was at historic lows. In the U.S., unemployment was hovering around 4.2% when we started Capango. Um, and so finding workers was a substantial challenge. And um, all the employers were having a challenge with that. Um, with COVID, what we've seen is just this massive amount of turmoil in the marketplace. There was the huge layoffs. There's actually been probably a 70% recovery of jobs um, since the initial layoffs. It's, it's recovered better than most people anticipate, um, and it continues to recover. And certainly, we anticipate that several months from now, as we do all get vaccines, um, we're all going to want to get out of the house. We're all going to want to go places and do things. And, and so yep. retail and restaurants are going to be the beneficiaries of that. So um, even right now, um, while the unemployment rate remains high, employers in the retail and re restaurant industries will still say that their number one challenge is finding good quality workers. Um, whether that means that you're a small mom and pop restaurant that maybe has a small team and all of a sudden somebody tested positive and now not only that individual's out of your restaurant, but the four other persons that they were on shift with are out and suddenly you're in jeopardy of having to close your ah, business. I you of that. It. So there's this kind of um, 
th th this turmoil that continues to be in the marketplace. Um, some workers have voluntarily said they've taken themselves out of the workforce. They don't want to work in retail and restaurants right now. Well, that's fair. I mean, everybody has to make those those decisions, and those are tough decisions for families to make. Um, so we uh, essentially are taking the position of we know there's an end to this cloud. And we want to be positioned in a way to help as many workers and as many employers and connect them as fast as we can to be as effective as getting everybody in the right places we can. The, you know, all of our economies are going to be better when we get retail and restaurants back open and we get these people back to work. Right. I, for one, cannot wait to go dine somewhere. Yeah, I think that's the other thing that... Um, has really happened with COVID is it starts to segment out and, and people say, well, is this a permanent change to retail or is this a permanent change to restaurant? I think there are things that will be permanent changes out of this. We all now know that we can get food or product delivered to our house and, and it's convenient and, and, and it's easy. And so we'll continue to do that. We might not do it at the same level we're doing at it today, but we'll definitely continue to do it. Um, at the same time, we know that we all miss the experience of going to a store and touching and feeling and, and trying different things. We miss the experience of going to a restaurant and sitting with a team and, and having a, a social gathering and maybe seeing a chef or somebody. So I think what will happen is those industries will focus more on the experience uh, to add value to what they do, right? Uh, whether it's a retailer that adds value in their stores or whether it's a restaurant that adds value there, the experience is going to be a huge part of, hey, let's get back out there. Yeah. All right. Stefan, that's that's just about our time. Thank you so much for your uh, your generosity. I'm really excited to follow on uh, Capango and see what happens in the next, uh, next few months as, as the Economy uh, economy opens up. I think it's going to be fascinating. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, appreciate it. Have a great day. Thanks very much, Eric. Uh, appreciate doing this. And and yep, for sure, we're we're crossing our fingers for a great recovery of the economy and and for a great future for Capango. All right. See ya. Thanks.